All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Friday evening, right at the eight o'clock hour for Friday findings. I'm gonna wait a little bit for those of you that are gonna join us. Let me know when you are hopping on so I can begin a countdown. Hi, Danny. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm sitting here in my office, as you can see all of my tiger memorabilia behind me. Hi, Carolyn. Thanks for joining us. We'll wait a few moments for some other folks to tune in and then we'll get going here. Hope that you ladies have had a good week. Hi, Wilbur. Hope that you have had good days this week. And hi, Abby. Leading into the weekend, we're looking forward to a weekend of ministry. I've got a special message that I want to share with the folks at Life Fellowship on Sunday. Not that other messages are not special, but I believe this is going to really hit home for a lot of people. So, hi Brad, thanks for tuning in. The title of uh, the message that I'm going to share on Sunday is You're Not Forgotten. Hi, thanks for jumping on. So I believe it's going to be ministry for a lot of people. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. So hope that you guys can make it. And I hope that you would invite someone to join you at one of the services on Sunday morning. Hi, Macy. Thanks for tuning in. We'll get started here in just a moment. Those of you that are, are on at this point, you can form of scripture and look at Romans chapter 14. We're going to continue our study through the book of Romans. We have talked about for several weeks in Friday Findings the concept of law versus grace. And we're going to continue that thread. I know that we have talked about other things as we have journeyed through Romans, but it ties into grace, it ties into the law, it ties into what took place in Rome when Paul wrote this letter to the Christians in Rome, but also how it applies to us today. So, I want to dive into that. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for tuning in. And see how we would find ourselves in this same type of setting in which Paul wrote to and for the people that were in Rome at this time. Romans chapter 14. This is what we're going to look at tonight. In the heading of chapter 14 in the NIV translation, the heading simply reads, The Weak and the Strong. So I'll give you a few more uh, seconds to find that place in your Bible tonight, and we'll dive in. As we're waiting for any others that are going to join us, I want to say this as I shared on this past Wednesday. Despite some of the confusion regarding the governor's comments last week and then again yesterday, we are still in phase two and the gatherings that have been restricted to 50 people or less, that does not apply to church gatherings, houses. 
So for us at Life Fellowship, we're able to continue to do church like we have been doing during the phase two for the last several weeks. So whichever service you desire to be a part of, we are within the guidelines of uh, our governor. So uh, 8.30, 10 o'clock or 11.30, whichever service you choose to be a part of you are more than welcome to come and we we would like for you to be there masks are not mandatory we encourage you to wear masks if you're comfortable if you're not comfortable of wear, wearing a mask then by all means you do not have to wear a mask we do want to strongly urge those that are elderly or those with some underlying health conditions Although you may not have any symptoms of the COVID virus, it might be best that you keep your distance from gatherings and crowds. And we encourage you to stay in the safety and comfort of your home and watch online. Hi, Tony. Thanks for tuning in. That would give to you, not only in this moment, but in the the future. So just keep this in mind and we just ask you to use wisdom. We are looking out for your best interest and we want everyone to be safe and keep everyone healthy. So just wanted to add that to uh, the comments with our time together tonight. So keep that in mind. Romans chapter 14, let's get started. I'm reading out of the NIV translation. This is Paul. I want you to put yourself in the setting in which Paul is writing in and who he's writing to. This is an early embryonic small Christian group that have assembled and the church is growing and gaining momentum and they are uh, beginning to receive uh, Jewish converts along with Gentile converts. So they're all cohabitating as the church of Jesus Christ in this first century in the city of Rome. And they are like, I'm sure, other newly formed organizations, specifically Christian organizations. There are people from all walks of life and they're coming into this relationship together with different viewpoints and different ways of thinking about matters. And Paul has to address some of these things. So he, in 14, is addressing some things relative to the way the Jewish people, prior to becoming Christians, believers, Christ followers, followed by way of tradition and culture, so you have to look at the time in which, hi Gabby, in which Paul was writing to. You have to look at the culture. You have to look at the setting. You have to look at the people that are part of this gathering of first century church. So all of these factors need to be considered for reading any text, but especially this chapter 14 in the book of Romans. So with all that said, I want you to consider all those factors as we read through, and I'm going to give some commentary and some uh, comments regarding what Paul is speaking and saying to the early Christians in Rome as he writes this letter. Verse 1 of chapter 14, Except the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. When he says faith's weak, he's just simply saying those new believers, those who are coming into this faith walk, this idea, this new idea of following the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 2, one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. So here is the, here's the issue that Paul is writing to. The Jewish tradition and teachings followed a set, a set of 
regulations regarding diet. There were certain foods not uh, supposed to eat. They were required to abstain. And then there were other foods that they were allowed to eat. So they're bringing this tradition, hi Michael, into the setting. And this is what Paul is uh, talking to them about. He's talking about certain types of food, certain types of meats. That's why he alludes to eating vegetables instead. Now he's talking to the ones in this first few scriptures. He's talking to the ones that are the Jewish believers that have converted to Christianity. Verse 3, the one who eats anything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. The one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. He's just saying simply, because of Christ and what he has done and what he has brought as he's fulfilled the law and as he has set up a new system, the system of grace and not so much the law. He is saying to this group of people that don't, don't begin to focus so much on these uh, things that are not as important as you seem to think they are and do not sit in judgment with one another regarding the stance that they're taking regarding this food or this dietary issue. Verse 4, who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Verse 5, one person considers one day more sacred than the other. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Uh, so he's second issue that he is addressing, and that is, what is the Sabbath? Is it Sunday? Is it Saturday? And we, as New Covenant believers, we dedicate the first day of the week, that being Sunday, as being the Lord's Day. Well, the Sabbath in the Jewish writings, in the Torah, in the Old Testament, was Saturday. The Sabbath was Saturday. So he is saying to the Gentiles that have become Christians, he's saying to the Jews that have converted to Christianity, he's saying to them in this second matter about which day is to be considered the, or the Lord's Day or the Sabbath. He just simply says, whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. So whatever day that this group of people regards the Lord's day, then make it that day and make it special. Don't strain at a gnat, but swallow a camel. Jesus said something about that in the Gospels. Let me read on. verse Verse uh, number 6b, whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. So whatever is on the heart of the conscience of the individual, and God is the judger of the heart, we know that. He judges the intentions of the person. He is just simply saying God understands and who are we to point fingers and judge someone else regarding a particular matter that is gray, is um, not so much black and white, especially in the New Covenant. Verse 7, for none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Verse 10. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. 
It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. He's just simply saying in those, hi Gretchen, thanks for joining us tonight. He's just simply saying in those last few verses of scripture, is Jesus Christ that uh, we will give an account to? It's uh, you alone, it's me alone, we will be the ones that will be judged by the Lord and no one else. And we shouldn't have these trite, trivial uh, mindsets or viewpoints regarding something so uh, incidental as these uh, things that are part of our lives, whether it be culture, whether it be uh, gray areas in the Bible, whether it be something that uh, I think differently than you think. And uh, Paul is addressing some of these things with the church there in Rome. Verse, verse, Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or a sister. I am convinced being fully persuaded in the Lord that nothing is unclean in itself. But if someone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. He's saying, I mean, I can't really put it any clearer than that. Hi, Patty. He is just simply saying that we are not to be stumbling blocks to someone else. And let me... Let me clarify someone else, a brother and sister in Christ, a believer in the faith, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. If, if they ha are having issues or difficulties or challenges with a certain thing, and we feel or you feel that that is not a challenge for you, that is not something that uh, causes you to stumble and you see no wrong in it, but yet your brother or sister does. He's just simply saying that we have the responsibility not to be a stumbling block to someone that happens to have an issue or have a challenge with what we don't have a challenge with. So he's speaking specifically uh, about dietary, eating uh, certain foods. But you could draw the parallel to other things in uh, your life. You could draw it to uh, drinking. You could draw it to uh, certain types of alcohol. Uh, in fact, later on in this chapter, Paul speaks to that. And you can draw the same principles to those things. And other lifestyle things that uh, are to that person sin, to that person something that is a challenge and a stumbling block that they want to abstain from. And Paul's calling all believers to not be a stumbling block to someone else that's having difficulty. Verse 15, if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Or you could say eat or drink. Uh, do not by your eating destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Verse 19. Let us. Hi, Nicole. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Paul says in another uh, portion of scripture in one of his other epistles, he says, sometimes I don't do what I can do and I have the liberty to do, but I choose not to do it because I know that it's going to harm a relationship. I know that's going to harm my brother and sister. I know that I will be a stumbling block to them, so I'm choosing not to. Even though I have the liberty to, I'm choosing not to, so that peace and mutual edification may take place. And he's saying the same thing here in verse 19. Verse 20, 
Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. Or you could use the word drink as well. Eat or drink or anything that we could do as far as behavior that, that you may feel like there's nothing wrong with. But the other person looking on has big problems with that. And, and as they see their brother and sister uh, involved in or active in or participating in, it can be a stumbling block to them. So this is what Paul's saying, verse 21. It is better not to eat or drink wine or do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. And that is it's a, it's a larger issue Paul is talking about here. He's talking about something more important than just the act of eating certain foods, drinking. The bigger issue is, are we, are you, or is someone that is a believer causing another believer to stumble and fall? That's the bigger issue. That's what Paul's saying. It's better not to eat or drink wine or do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. Remember the, the heading of the chapter, the weak and the strong. Um, so let that sink in. Verse 22, so whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat because they eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So, a lengthy chapter. We read all 23 verses of chapter 14, and uh, I just wanted to, to read that chapter because that uh, is a somewhat of a hot button, a hot topic, hot potato, so to speak, when it comes to Scripture. And there are some different viewpoints in this particular chapter. But the overarching theme of this chapter is not so much the elements or the issues that Paul is addressing. The overarching theme of this is those that are weak are susceptible to certain things He's calling the strong not to be a stumbling block over the same things that the strong has overcome or the strong has no challenges or issues with. He's calling for the strong to be uh, more of an example to the weak or those that are babes in Christ, those that are not further down the path in their walk with Christ. He's, he's, he's calling those strong people, instead of being a stumbling block, he's calling them to rise above it, even though they may have the liberty to engage, they choose not to so that they can lift up their weaker brother and sister in Christ or their, their newer believer in Christ. Because remember what I said earlier, What's going on here in first century Rome? There are, there are believers in that gathering. Hi, Brandon. There are believers in that gathering that have been serving Christ for a few years. There are believers that are babes in Christ that have just come on into this relationship with the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They begin to follow him and made him their Lord. And they are just coming into this uh, church that Jesus Christ established. There's a lot of things that they are uh, not familiar with. And as a, a new Jewish convert coming into Christianity, they're bringing with them all the things that they knew up to that point. The culture, the tradition of the Jewish people, the, the Old Testament writings, the teachings, and that's why there's having, they're having some issues with the food and the drink, uh, with uh, what others have gotten past it that have been in the faith 
uh, longer than they have. So that's why Paul is writing this particular portion of the letter. We call it chapter 14. That's why he's addressing that. And he's saying to the strong, look, you've got to help those that are babes in Christ. You've got to not be a stumbling block. Even if you see that what they are bringing up is, is minute, but to them it's important. So you've got to recognize that as a strong believer and not, not be the stumbling block to, to those that have not yet arrived at the status that you may be in. And as Paul speaks to this gathering of believers, Gentile and Jewish alike, he really speaks to us, to our hearts, even today. Maybe you can think of some things that with your relationship with Jesus, you see nothing wrong with for a new believer to look upon you and your viewpoint being there's nothing wrong with it, but it's causing the new believer, the weaker, quote unquote, the baby in Christ to stumble, then that's the issue that Paul is speaking to us today. Then even though we have every right and liberty to, we shouldn't do it because we don't want to cause our brother and sister who's new in the faith to stumble. So that's the overarching theme of chapter 14. And I'm sure that those that are watching can fill in the blanks regarding this teaching because it, it goes further uh, and deeper into some other things that we have available to us today relative to uh, real concrete things, activity, behavior, things that we can be involved in today that was just a non-issue in the first century church. It just wasn't available to, to anyone. But now there are so many things that are at our disposal. And we must be careful as strong believers, as believers that have been serving God much longer than new babies in Christ. And we've got to be careful. We've got to be cognizant to know what we are involving ourselves in and how that is affecting the new baby in Christ, the new believer, to, to view and observe what we're doing and the question that we must ask to ourselves, is this affecting them in a negative light? Is this causing them to stumble? And Paul instructs, the believer in the latter part of chapter 14. If it does, then do not do it. Do it behind closed doors. Do it just between you and God. That's what he's saying. So keep these things in mind. Um, you that are uh, veterans of the faith, you without a doubt understand what Paul is writing about and what he is saying. Those of you that may have been serving the Lord for just a short period of time, be encouraged. Know that God is faithful to speak to your heart. The Holy Spirit is faithful to lead you and guide you. Remember that each one of us individually have a intimate relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, and we are not to look toward one another to point fingers here or there. We are to look to the Lord and ask God to guide us and lead us and show us where we should walk and where we should not walk, how we should live and how we should not live, how we should behave and how we should not behave what activity we involve ourselves in and what activity we should not involve ourselves in. So it's very simple when it comes to this particular portion of the letter to the Romans, chapter 14 in particular, that Paul is speaking our hearts as well.
So take into consideration what has been shared, what Paul has written, and let that be applied to our hearts today and in the future. Well, I'm going to sign off. That was on my heart today, and I wanted to share that with you. Remember, we'll continue to show, so if you, if I can get it out, if you should so choose to join us for another edition of Friday Findings next Friday at 8 p.m., uh, make sure you, you share this with some other folks and invite them to join us next Friday. I'll be sharing uh, with you next Friday, Oceanside, so Tune in next Friday for Friday Findings at 8 p.m. Remember, Sunday services, we're open. We're phase two. Come one, come all. The 50 people or less restriction does not apply to churches, so you're welcome to come. If you want to wear a mask, we encourage you to do so. If you're not comfortable wearing a mask, then by all means, don't wear a mask. You do you. That's what we've been saying. We are here at Life Fellowship on our campus. We're a no judgment zone. So no one's going to judge you if you wear a mask or if you do not wear a mask. Whatever your comfort level is, we want you to come. But we do want you to be safe. So if you have, if you have some underlying health conditions, we ask you to use wise judgment and make wise decisions. If you are elderly it may be best for you not to be in a gathering. We just want to keep you safe and we want to do the very best we can to make the best decisions regarding your safety and your health. But our doors will be open at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30 service. And we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I've got a special message that I want to share with you entitled, You're Not Forgotten. So I believe this is going to bless a lot of people's hearts. So we look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Have a great night, great weekend. See you soon.